The tyrant King Leopold II and his atrocities on Congolese. King Leopold II was one of the worst nightmares that has ever happened to the Congolese, if not the worst. His reign was full of terror, brutal acts of human genocide, yet a tyrant like Leopold II goes unnoticed in the history pages. Leopold II, the King of Belgium, reduced the population of the Congo from 20 million estimated to 10 million and still managed to retain his reputation as a great monarch. The current King Philippe of Belgium expressed his deepest regrets for abuses committed during the country's colonization of the Democratic Republic of Congo on Wednesday 8, June 2022, but he did not offer a formal apology. The regime colonial, as it was based on the exploitation and the domination. This regime was that of a inégal. inégale en soi injustifiable, marqué par le paternalisme, les discriminations et le racisme. Il a donné lieu à des exactions et des humiliations. À l'occasion de mon premier voyage au Congo, ici même, face au peuple congolais, Et à ceux qui aujourd'hui encore en souffrent, je désire réaffirmer mes plus profonds regrets pour ces blessures du passé. Leopold II was the second king of the Belgians from 1865 to 1909 and, through wool and effort, the absentee owner and autocratic ruler of the Congo Free State from 1885 to 1908. Born in Brussels as the second but eldest surviving son of Leopold I and Louise of Orleans, he succeeded his father to the Belgian throne in 1865 and reigned for exactly 45 years until his death, the longest reign of a Belgian monarch to date. He died without surviving legitimate sons. The current Belgian king descends from his nephew and successor, Albert I. Leopold had many mistresses. Caroline Lacroix, a 16-year-old French prostitute, was one of his favorites who later gave him two sons who were ineligible for the throne. At the age of nine, he was appointed a sub-lieutenant in the Belgian army under Duke of Brabant's title. He served in the military until 1865. By then, he held the rank of lieutenant general. At the age of 18, he married Marie Henriette of Austria. The princess of Austria bore Leopold II for progeny out of which only one was a boy who also passed away at a young age from pneumonia after falling into a pond. Leopold's father died on December 10, 1865, and he took the oath of office on December 17 at the age of 30. Leopold inherited the throne because his older brother Louis Philippe died earlier. Leopold had always had a keen interest in the advancement of Belgium and its trade. He explained his goal for his reign in an 1888 letter addressed to his brother, Prince Philippe, Count of Flanders, the country must be strong, prosperous, therefore have colonies of her own, beautiful and calm. During his reign, Leopold saw the empires of the Netherlands, Portugal, and Spain as being in a state of decline and expressed interest in buying their territories. In 1866, Leopold instructed the Belgian ambassador in Madrid to speak to Queen Isabella II of Spain about ceding the Philippines to Belgium. Knowing the situation fully, the ambassador did nothing. Leopold quickly replaced the ambassador with a more sympathetic individual to carry out his plan. In 1868, when Isabella II was deposed as Queen of Spain, Leopold tried to press his original plan to acquire the Philippines. But without funds, he was unsuccessful. Leopold then devised another unsuccessful plan to establish the Philippines as an independent state, which could then be ruled by a Belgian. When both of these plans failed, Leopold shifted his aspirations of colonization to Africa. Leopold commissioned a great number of buildings in Belgium, urban projects, and public works, largely with the profits generated from exploitation of the Congo Free State. These projects earned him the epithet of the Builder King. Leopold was the founder and sole owner of the Congo Free State, a private project undertaken on his own behalf. He used explorer Henry Morton Stanley to help him lay claim to the Congo, an area now known as the Democratic Republic of the Congo. 
At the Berlin Conference of 1884 to 1885, the colonial nations of Europe authorized his claim by committing the Congo Free State to improving the lives of the people. This move made Leopold's private invasion of the Congo appear benign. Leopold appealed to Belgium's government to provide him with seed funds to carry out this humanitarian endeavor. The scam succeeded, the king got government funds to finance his private African empire. Leopold used the money to finance a mercenary army known as Force Public. The king appointed governors whose job was to squeeze as much money out of the Congo as possible. Millions of Congolese inhabitants, including children, were mutilated, killed, or died from disease during his rule. He ran the Congo using the mercenary force public for his personal enrichment. Failure to meet rubber collection quotas was punishable by death. If any of the slave men failed to fulfill their daily quota, their hands and feet were amputated, their bodies mutilated, and all this to set an example for other slaves to work harder. However, if the slave's hands could not be amputated, his wife and children's had to pay the price. Leopold extracted a fortune from the Congo, initially by the collection of ivory, and after a rise in the price of rubber in the 1890s, by forced labor the people were expected to harvest and process even more rubber to take advantage of the market which led to more deaths. Finally, in 1908, international criticism and pressure forced the Parliament of Belgium to annex the Congolese Free State. The colony became the Belgian Congo. The Belgian Congo became the Democratic Republic of the Congo after gaining independence in 1960. On December 17, 1909, Leopold II died at Laeken, and the Belgian crown passed to Albert I, the son of Leopold's brother, Philippe, Count of Flanders. His funeral cortege was booed by the crowd in expression of disapproval of his rule of the Congo. Thank you for watching. Take care.